Welcome back, Blade fans. i uh, got some canafs to share with you today. Go figure. <laughs> what are you tuning into me for if you ain't interested in canafs, nafs, knives? These are folders. These are folders under 100. I was going to say favorite budget folders, but I knew somebody would fault me and say, that knife's $80. That's not budget. Hey, friend. Got to get up with the times, inflation, this, that, and the other thing. You got knives that were a couple hundred bucks a few years ago going for 600 bucks now. Demco. Oh, go figure, Mr. Demco. <laughs> oh, I don't have any of your knives. They're nice, but God almighty, they are up there. Benchmade, you guys too. So no Benchmade today and no Demco today. What can I say? Got some Civivis. Got some damn designs. Got some real steel and got some Sen Cut, got some Beyond DDC. So let's get at it, shall we? What have we got? I'm going to save one of these for last because it's just a blow away favorite. But let's start with one you don't see too often Damn Designs. This is something, uh, brainchild of Adrian D'Souza. You may be familiar with the brand or not. I don't have, unfortunately, a current price on this, but I am a damned sure that it's under a hundred bucks because this is the 14C model, but I like it because it has a titanium handle. And I'm pretty sure these are, these came in under a hundred. Uh, the S35 VN model, and he had all sorts of tiers of these, um, did go for over 100. So uh, if I had any S35 VN models, and I might, I didn't include them. I think I got seven or eight of his uh, folders. So this is the Basilisk, and he has a Basilisk um, fixed blade as well. Say Basilisk 10 times fast. Maybe you can. <laughs> He does an excellent job with the stone wash. I love the heavy stone wash on these knives. There's his logo, the uh, ram there, kind of uh, demonic kind of a thing. Some of you guys don't like that. You're Christians. I can't say as I blame you, but, you know, hey, everybody's got skull tattoos everywhere these days. So uh, whatever. Me, I'm a clean slate, except for that scar. <laughs> okay. Got to get some surgery now and then, fix the parts when you get old. But this is kind of a cool, big, deep belly, very nicely sharpened from the factory uh, folder. It's got a little bit of weight to it because of the, size, the solid titanium handle. It has uh, hidden liners, nested liners. Um, locks up really, really well. It is uh, flipper, back flipper only. Nice ergos and uh, really nice jimping. High grind, slicey knife, still with a point, still piercy. That all works for me. And I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on each of these because uh, I really don't like doing half-hour videos. <laughs> I'm going to move over to a recent favorite, the Civivi Vision FG. And this is the Synex design, and this is what he calls the Super Lock. Yes, there's a lot of contention as to whether Demko's Shark Lock came first or this guy did, who patented it first. Um, can we agree on the fact that they maybe they came out about the same time and one was patented later and so on and so forth? I don't know. Uh, they, I am told they don't function exactly the same. So uh, although that lock pulls back, slides back on the spine of the handle, they uh, inside are not functioning the same. And that is as detailed as I'm going to get. I will leave the breakdown for you guys that take things apart a lot. Maybe love them knives. Maybe Lee over there would, uh, if he hasn't already, take this apart. Uh, this is a budget version for about $79, I think. This is the Ultim, so it's a little pricier, maybe $89, still under $100. This one has the black blade. It is, I think, Nitro V, if I can find that. I don't think they listed it very well. I'm pretty sure it's Nitro V. If you think it's 14C, let me know, but I'm pretty sure these are Nitro V. 
Ultim handle with black. That just sort of uh, was the reason I got a second one. I've got one in the JG10 with a uh, plain blade. Deep carry clip, uh, reversible. You can sort of see through that Ultim. You got the three holes there. Uh, you can open it this way. It is very convenient. Um, no jimping except on the lock, which is interesting. Uh, double thumb stud. Uh, no back flipper, but you can pull back on that uh, super lock as I have been doing. Um, just a very fidgety, very friendly uh, lockup, tight lockup kind of a knife. Uh, a lot of people really are digging this knife in all of its flavors and iterations. See if I can stuff that there. Um, how about the Senkut Glide Strike? This is kind of a sleeper, I would say. Look at this blade. I'm just blown away by the blade. It is gorgeous. I love that long clip point. Uh, 9CR on this one, I think. We asked them not to do branding, and uh, they're not doing much branding. Let's see. Yeah, it's 9CR MOV. Uh, black G10 handles on this. I think it comes in at least one other flavor. We'll try to leave you links. Some of these knives, some of the older ones may not be available still. But, wow, look at that satin finish. And you've got a full choil for choking up there. And some very decent jimping. You got an opening hole. And that's all you got. <laughs> it is, uh, for me, best middle finger flicked rather than thumb flicked especially with the right hand, which is uh, building up its strength after some corrective surgery. Um, it is, yes, a uh, switchable clip, as far as I can tell. It is a uh, fairly flat, thin clip, springy, rides on the surface, and they do use flat-headed screws. Uh, thank you, Senkut, which is really Civivi, which is really we. <laughs> And if I didn't mention it, there was a Wii version of this um, Vision knife way back when, before this one came out. Much more bucks, though, a couple hundred at least. Um, here's one you may not know about. And this is a design by Ivan Braganitz. It is a real steel knife. It is N690. And... Um, there's Ivan Braganitz's uh, logo right there. As uh, far as I know, he is a Ukrainian. Correct me if I'm wrong. And uh, this is the Rokot, which doesn't mean rocket. It, it means uh, thunder or a loud noise or uh, something like that. Okay. It is a very sort of simple design, but it is so ergonomic and very much in keeping with a lot of the, uh, shall we say, Eastern European, Russian influenced and uh, Ukrainian influenced design, okay, that we have seen with that sort of straightish blade with a belly near the front and a straight spine, a little bit of a drop to it. Um, the, I am told by Ivan, Ivan, that, um, the Morse code here, and that is Morse code on both the clip and the handle spell his name out in the Russian language. And, uh, as you may know, a lot of Ukrainians speak Russian and, um, uh, that's the reason for that. Um, the th double thumb studs work exceedingly well. It is a three-way knife, so you can thumb flip it. I ain't doing too well with the right thumb. I could try the left thumb, see if I do any better. Could surprise myself. No, nope, it ain't working. But <laughs> yes, that is a platform for a front flip. And we also have the double thumb studs, which work exceedingly well with either hand. Exposed liner, um, weight relieved, 
and uh, just a joy to use. You wouldn't think so. There's no, uh, you know, guard for your finger, this, that, and the other thing. Um, I believe they're still making them. And I think I have a special one that was, uh, came from Finland, from Lamnia. That is an M390 and it's all blacked out. And that one seldom leaves the box. I haven't done too much with that one. Uh, this one is a daily carry every now and then. The Rokat, Ivan Braganet's Real Steel. Um, no, there's a Vivi. And this is also one of the recent, very favorite uh, Civivis by a lot of folks. Um, and this is the Sentinel Strike, of course. You know, I didn't. Sentinel Strike. This one's got a um, an integral cap on it, kind of a, a back cap, not really a back spacer. Um, got some holes in it there. Interesting. Got kind of a grenade pattern here on it, fairly smooth. Aluminum for the rest of the handle. This one's black aluminum. This comes in about three or four different flavors. Very, very light. It is a button lock. And you've really got to push on that button. That's a good thing. So that it does not accidentally close. And you've got a full choil there. Really nice. And we've got a, uh, a hole for middle finger flicking or thumb flicking. So this is a two-way opener. Thumb studs and the uh, slot. Oh, three-way. And the back flipper tab. You might have trouble seeing that blade on top of the black background, but doing my best here to accommodate all the blades. Um, <clears throat> just unbelievable how light this is. I'm going to tell you how light it is because I got my scale off on the side here. It is three and a half ounces. Feels even lighter than that. Doesn't feel like some three and a half ounce knives that I've held. Um, just beautifully ergonomic long blade. You'll see most of these here have at least three and a half, three and three quarter inch blade. And there's eight knives all together. So let's get to the Kaiser Brat, another sort of sleeper, but it has the distinction of having a integral G10 handle. So all this mechanism is slipped in afterwards uh, somebody broke it down online and uh, took it apart, and it was very interesting. You have to everything sort of keys in, and you have to put take them out in a certain sequence, put them in in a certain sequence um, by using that um, that Torx there and taking out the pivot screw. And I think there's another uh, Torx there. So uh, that's a button lock with a little bit of stick and. Um, it will close fairly easily. So it doesn't have that recessed button that the Sentinel Strike has. I think the Sentinel Strike is exceptional for being a safe button lock. Whereas with this one, you got to just sort of watch it. But you do have the protection of the flipper tab being a pretty sizable guard on this one. Again, very light. And uh, as Kaiser likes to do on a lot of their knives, a really long run of effective jimping. You may or may not like the blade style, but it is very utilitarian, very EDC. Still got a point for piercing. Tall grind. Uh, steel on this guy is 154 cm. Hard to argue with that. Good old school steel. Well, save the best for last. Why? <laughs> Why is this beyond EDC Pinkerton design night horse in 14C 28N? Why is it spectacular? Because it is large. It is a beautiful design. It is smooth as silk and drop shut. And it's $29. Yes, but you can't get them anymore, folks. They ain't making it. They're making it in titanium for a hundred and a half. Smoky Mountain Knife Works exclusive, Dirk Pinkerton design beyond EDC, um, twenty nine ninety five. 
Beautiful deep carry clip. No, it's not reversible. We can live with that for the price and for the quality. It is just phenomenal. What a thunk it makes on the way out. Perfect lockup. Double thumb studs only. Nice chamfered liner. And again, there's your smooth action on the drop shot. It's pneumatic. You know, we, we often talk about pneumatic on high-end custom and uh, mid-tech knives, but <laughs> for 30 bucks, guys, oh, unbelievable. And the length of the blade, if you like large knives, do you like large budget knives? I mean, this was my budget knife of the year for 2023. Uh, it's almost four and a half inches. It's like 4.3 inches. And overall, the knife is 10 inches. So it's in the Navaja style of a uh, Spanish style of knife with that um, stepped down spine there, that very piercy point, but still with a significant belly and a fairly high grind. And uh, no, it's not four, it's not 440 and it's not D2, it's 14C, which is, you know, not a miracle steel, but if you can find a better deal than that, please let me know. It checks so many boxes, as we like to say. Those are my selections for under a hundred in a variety of different manufacturers. Oh, I forgot a knife. I was so excited about the night horse that the poor Thornton did not get any time. Wayne Walter designed the Thornton, and this is by Vosteed. It is a button lock. It is a safe button lock, as I like to say, because you really need to push that thumb in there to close that knife. Beautiful action. Um, set up all day for EDC. I'm not normally a smaller knife type person, but this one really does check a lot of boxes. It is a deep carry. It is not, unfortunately, ambidextrous. And he did state in his review on his channel, Wayne's World, Wayne's Sharp World, that uh, he regretted that. And in future iterations of it, they may very well put that clip on the left as well as the right. But he did a phenomenal job of designing the ultimate EDC knife and kind of a Warncliffe sheep's foot from Nitro V. Nope, 14C. Keep getting them confused. 14C28N. And um, I'm cutting it short just because I went a little bit over my time limit. And uh, I did not want to miss one of the better knives on the table. So uh, thank you, Wayne, for your excellent design and Vosteed for carrying it out. There's a recent review on this knife too. So if you want to know more about what I think about that knife, and this was provided for me by Vosteed for review, then you can check it out on its own review on my channel. Well, let me know what you think. And don't forget to give this vid a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Be back soon.